Hello everyone, welcome to EduTap. I hope you have been preparing for your IFSC grade A exam really well. In this session, we will be discussing most important MCQs from the topic GIFT IFSC. So we have discussed five MCQs from the same topic in previous sessions. We will be continuing the same discussion in this session also. We have covered the IFSC Act and various sections of it in a detailed manner in the sessions that you have already seen. And we will be covering them further in the further sessions. But then we are moving towards this topic that is GIFT IFSC. I hope you all are ready to answer these questions. And before moving on, let me just tell you what all we are covering. We are covering the topics which are part of, which are part of the syllabus of uh, phase 2, paper 2 of IFSCA grade A exam. And here you have IFSCA at uh, Gift City, Gift IFSC, IFSCA as well as the Global Financial Center. These are some unconventional topics for which you may not find MCQs and our aim here is to help you in understanding the kind of questions that you can expect in the exam. So this was a homework question that was given which among the following sections of the IFSCA Act protect members of IFSCA from legal proceedings for things done in good faith. Okay, so these are the lines that you will find in certain one of the sections of the IFSCA Act and which is that section it, is, it has been asked here. So first one is uh, section 41. So this is not correct because obviously we know there are only 34 sections in the IFSCA Act and so we can eliminate it. Section 4 talks about the establishment of the IFSCA or the authority. It is called authority uh, for the purposes of the IFSCA Act. And uh, the establishment of that particular authority has been done with respect to all the provisions are given in section 4 of the IFSCA Act 13. Section 13 talks about the powers of IFSCA, whatever powers it has uh, acting as a uh, unified, a combined regulator of the entities that will be established within IFSCs. Then, yes. Section 25 talks about protecting whatever uh, things are done by the members of IFSCA from legal proceedings, okay? That is, they are considered to be public servants under Section 24 and whatever they do is considered most of their work as far as their uh, work uh, with respect to their duty, whatever duties they do with respect to their post, whatever they do, that is to be considered to be in public interest and so they are protected from legal proceedings. That is given in Section 25 of the Act. 24 says that these members are to be considered public servants, that is whatever they do do uh, as far as the duty is concerned that will be considered to be in public interest okay here we have section 34 which is a large section of the act and it talks about savings with respect to the uh, validity of the provisions of the specific act okay i hope this is clear you should keep revising these things and the answer is d which is section 25 it talks about protecting uh, the uh, members of IFSCA from legal proceeding. Now moving on to the first question of this session, which among the following statement is or are correct is what you need to identify with respect to international financial services centers in India. Okay, so whatever the mandate they have, whatever the uh, regulatory framework they have with respect to that, the questions have been framed here within uh, Gift City as well as the topics here will be touching Gift City, will be touching Gift IFSC, all of those. So the first statement here is an IFSC caters to the customers outside the jurisdiction of the domestic economy. Is it so? It is a jurisdiction that provides financial services to non-residents in Indian rupee. Okay, so the transactions or the uh, entire services are provided in Indian rupee. Is that the currency that is used, that is prevalent in the IFSCs? It is set up to undertake financial services transactions that are currently carried on outside India by overseas financial institutions. Really important and nice statements are given here. This will uh, let you know about the activities, the services that are provided by the IFSCs. Right. So the first statement here says an IFSC caters to the customers outside the jurisdiction of domestic economy. So the IFSC caters to the customers within uh, the jurisdiction of domestic economy. So what is domestic economy? Domestic economy is India. We are talking about India. So the people who are in India, uh, it provides services to people who are outside India 
this is what is given yes it provides services to people in india and outside india also okay mainly outside india so this is correct right that is the main aim of establishing an international financial services center right to uh, provide services to the people who are outside india and that is going to help not just india but also the entire region right here we have it is a second statement it is a jurisdiction that provides financial services to non residents in indian rupee no it is not indian rupee that is the prevalent currency any foreign currency is what is given in the act and that is prevalent within the ifscs okay it is not indian rupee and that is the wrong uh, uh, thing uh, as far as the statement is concerned it is set up to undertake financial services transactions that are currently carried on uh, outside india okay currently carried on outside india by overseas financial institutions yes the aim of establishing ifsc we have only one right now that is gift ifsc is to carry out certain uh, services or to provide services which are being provided by institutions which are outside india for now we do not have such facilities we did not have such facilities in india those services are were being provided by various uh, financial institutions outside india okay whatever transactions buying of shares bonds these things uh, were of international uh, character those were being provided by financial institutions outside india now the ifsc does the job okay so that is the reason that we have established it and this is absolutely correct they still have a few things that are being provided by uh, institutions outside india for example we do not have our own indigenous dispute resolution uh dispute resolution body or you can say the framework in india right so we uh, take help of the dispute resolution framework of singapore and whatever disputes arise of different nature those are resolved by the uh, dispute resolution framework of singapore okay we uh, are trying to establish we uh, the uh, dispute resolution uh, entire framework is to be established in india under ifsc a and that has been proposed by the budget recent budget and the economic survey recent economic survey suggests the same okay so this is an example of one service that is being provided by an institution outside india still that is to be incorporated in india yes this is correct but the second statement is not correct one and three are correct we are doing this in detail so that you get to know all of the things in detail and you are able to answer the questions in the exam you know what is the background of the things right so here you have the entire explanation for the same which i have given you moving on to the second question which among the following is or are the benefits available availed by entities in the gift ifsc which of these benefits are provided to the entities let's say the banking units let's say the uh, we have very various uh, capital market intermediaries here they get certain benefits what are those the first one is lower operating costs obviously there are exemptions from taxes and so the operating cost will reduce when you do not have to pay a few taxes when you are in an ifsc so obviously yes lower operating cost is one benefit international dispute resolution center present in gift ifsc just now we have discussed this and you will be able to eliminate this liberal tax regime for 10 years yes for 10 years you have a liberal tax regi regime And that is what reduces the operating cost when you establish a banking unit let's say state bank of india has established a banking unit there so state bank of india's banking unit that is present there is going to have some exemptions from certain taxes and that is what reduces its operating costs and that is what is provided by the liberal tax regime that is present in the ifscs for 10 years we do not have uh, our own dispute resolution center we uh, take help of the dispute resolution center of different countries and mainly singapore for now we are we are in the process of establishing it in the gift ifsc right so the second statement is not correct one and three are correct again and so here the correct answer is d you can see one and three only d is the correct answer and the explanation is given here okay and all of these things are really important so uh, for now singapore international arbitration center is something that we take uh, make use of for international dispute resolution mechanism or the framework that we uh, make use of to so as to resolve the disputes that arise within india and the ifsc in india 
Moving on to the third question, which among the following entities do not require approval from any regulator to establish a unit in an IFSC in India? Okay. In general, all of the units that are established in the IFSC should be lawful. Whatever laws are applicable, uh, they should be uh, catering to those, they should be complying with those. But then there are certain entities that need dual approval that is they need the approval of the regulator specific regulator they also need the approval of the local development commissioner that is within the specific ifsc here we have gift sez within which we have the gift ifsc established okay within gift sez we have the gift ifsc established and sorry gift IFSC established and there uh, whoever is the development commissioner their approval is also required okay so there is one entity which does not require the approval of regulator but requires the approval of the development commissioner to establish a unit within the IFSC I hope this is clear most of the entities require dual uh, approval but one entity requires only a uh, single approval what is that IFSC banking unit, insurance company, capital market entities, bullion exchange, IT companies. Okay. So the correct answer you can guess here is yes, IT companies. So all of these are to be established in a legal manner, whatever laws are applicable within India with modifications or without whatever the IFSC A has decided are to be applicable to these entities being established in IFSC also. But these are, there are these IT companies which do not require the approval of any regulator they can take the approval of the development commissioner of the SCZ within which it uh, the uh, within which the uh, unit is being established and uh, carry on its activities we have the IFSC banking unit which requires the approval of RBI plus the development commissioner insurance companies I guess I think you can guess it now IRDAI plus the development commissioner Similarly, we have capital market intermediaries who need the approval from SEBI and the development commissioner, right? So these things are something that you need to keep in mind and that has been explained here also, right? That is given on the uh, website of GIFT, SEZ, GIFT Gujarat also, right? That IT companies do not need, require approval from any regulator, okay? This has been explicitly written. We have the fourth question in front of us. Which among the following statement is or are correct with respect to opening units by financial entities in IFSCs in India? Okay. Almost similar thing has been asked. I hope you can uh, guess the answer for this uh, now. An IT company can establish a unit in IFSC with the approval of Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Does it require the approval? A specific written approval of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs to establish uh, uh, its unit in IFSC, an IT company. A banking unit can be established in IFSC with the approval of SCZ Development Commissioner only. So the word you need to be careful here is only. Then we have the insurance company can be established in an IFSC with the approval from SCZ Development Commissioner only. Again, be careful. A capital market entity can be established in an IFSC with the approval from SCZ uh, Development Commissioner only. Again, we have... An IT company can establish a unit in IFSC with the approval of SEZ Development Commissioner only. Okay. So I guess you can tell me the answer now. Think about it in your mind. Yes. E is the correct answer here because IT company may not specifically require a written approval from the Ministry of Corporate Affairs every time it has to establish a unit. But then it has to be lawfully established, whatever laws are applicable within the IFSC. Also, it requires the approval of the SEZ Development Commissioner only, while others require the approval of a regulator along with the SEZ Development Commissioner. Okay, these things are to be kept in mind. And yeah, for that sake is the correct answer and the uh, explanation to the same is given here. Now, this is a homework question for you. You need to uh, go through the various uh, things that are given uh, the sources that you are following for the, the topic that is gift IFSC and gift city and then answer this which among the following statement is or are correct with respect to currency used in IFSCs okay uh, we have discussed we have touched upon this topic during this session also you can try to answer this all the transactions undertaken by the units in IFSC in India should be in Indian rupee is it so all the transactions undertaken by the units in IFSC in India should be in foreign currency. 
IFSC units can carry out administrative and statutory expenses in INR. INR is the Indian rupee, right? So try to answer this question, give the answer in the comment section. I hope you'll be answering it right. And to help you out in your preparation, we have come up with this ultimate test series wherein you will find tests uh, with respect to phase one and phase two. All the components of phase one, paper one, phase one, paper two, phase two, paper one and phase two, paper two, you will be finding the tests with respect to those here. There are also full length tests of phase one and phase two. Okay, so you can avail this uh, specific test series by clicking on the link given in the description. And if you have any other doubts, you can call us on 8146207241 to connect with us and get your doubts clarified. Also, you can mail us at hello at the rate edutab.co.in. I hope these sessions are helping you. Please do drop your feedback in the comment section. Thank you. All the best.